Hey there my fellow designers and creatives, hope you're all doing well. Welcome back to another video in the Lottie Files course for designers. In this video, we're gonna learn how to create these super cool, amazing stroke animations that we see all the time uh, in various places across the internet. So I'm gonna show you how to make this animation from scratch in this video. So we're actually gonna do some actual animation work and uh, we're gonna recreate the same thing. Uh, by the way, this is an animation from Cred. Um, actually, it's not a real animation that they made. It's the Cred logo. Cred is an Indian fintech company. And uh, I just thought that I could animate the logo because yeah, I felt it would be the perfect example. So before I get started, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a like on the video if you haven't done already. Okay, so let's go ahead and figure out how to make this animation. It's actually super simple and it just uses a few properties, but then the end result is phenomenal. I'm gonna show you a couple of interesting tips and tricks and teach you how to make really smooth buttery animations. Okay, now, before we do this animation, we wanna go ahead and create the assets. Now, I've gone ahead and made them in Figma. So here in Figma, I've gone ahead and just created them, and all you need to do is make sure that each of these are individual stroke layers. We're gonna be using an effect called as Trim Paths. I'm gonna show you how to use that um, effect to its maximum potential. Um, you're gonna go ahead and see that we have, all of these are different layers and each of these are stroke layers. As you can see, each of these are stroke layers uh, and I have just given it some random um, number. I've tried to trace it on the original logo so that it looks perfect uh, to the original one. And uh, yeah, that's about it. And once you do this, we can go ahead and and import these from Figma to After Effects. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do that. If you haven't checked out my video on how to import files from Figma and Illustrator into After Effects, make sure to check that out. Link will be down below in the description. Okay, so I'm gonna go down here to Plugins. I'm gonna choose Development. I'm gonna choose AEUX and I'm gonna select this and I'm gonna choose Send Selection to AE, okay? So it's gonna go ahead and it's gonna go ahead and put it into a brand new composition that I have. Uh, this is the original one. I'm gonna keep this as a reference so that I can pull values and make sure that it comes exactly the way we want. And I'm gonna come here to create two. Uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and rename this. Uh, whoops, whoops, that was crazy. Um, I'm gonna just search for create two and I'm going to type in cred uh, tutorial. Right, maybe that's a simpler way. And I'm gonna quickly rename this. So this is going to be, uh, what are the names that I use? It's stroke one, two, three, okay. So this is gonna be stroke one. Then we have uh, the outer one. I'm gonna bring that all the way to the bottom. This is gonna be uh, main, or actually, I don't know what the name was. I call it outer strokes. So I'm just gonna call it outer stroke. Um, and then we have, this is gonna be stroke two. And then this is gonna be stroke Three, right, so there you go, we have uh, three strokes and an outer stroke as well. Now, let me explain what's happening in this animation. So a couple of things, you can see that first of all, the animation is zooming in from big to small. It's sort of coming from, you know, like it has a zoom out effect, that's number one. The second thing is you can see these lines are animating, so that's the second animation. And third animation is that all of them start at different times to give that very techy feel. Uh, so that's another thing uh, that we want to create. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just animate the, uh, anim the stroke so that we can just have that. And then we're gonna create that zoom in effect and then also the easing effect and all of those things. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create, click on the stroke one, I'm gonna open this down, and I'm gonna come over here to the add section, I'm gonna choose an effect called as trim paths, okay? Now, like I said before in the previous videos, if you haven't checked those already, on this website, you can come down here and look at the supported features, and if you look at the supported feature, you can see that trim paths is a feature that is available on Android, iOS, and web. However, it's not supported on Windows. But TrimPath simultaneously is supported on all of them. Now, what is the difference between individually and simultaneously? Let me show you what that is. Now, let me show you how this TrimPath works, okay? So if I come down here to the stroke one, and I choose trim paths, and we have two options. Actually, we have three, we have start and we have offset. Now, if I turn down off the end one, you can see what's happening, right? you can see that the layer is actually sort of growing and shrinking, right? So this is basically the effect that we want. Now in this case, we just have this one vector layer on this particular layer, okay? Now, let me explain something. I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this vector number 11, okay? I'm going to hide all the other layers so that we can just look at this one for the time being, all right? I'm gonna uh, turn off everything else and I'm gonna apply this stroke layer here as well. Okay, so we have stroke 11 and we have stroke 12. I'm gonna just move the stroke, um, maybe just move this entire thing or actually the stroke 11. I'm just gonna select that and bring that over here. Now in this case, we have stroke 11 and we have stroke 12 all in one layer, 
Now, what happens here is if I choose simultaneously and if I turn off the end, you can see that both of them animate at the exact same time, right? This is what is simultaneously. But the moment I choose individually, right, you can see that it starts with the first one and then it animates the second one, right? So it's animating them individually and not simultaneously, right? So depending on the animation that you have, you can decide whether you want them to animate simultaneously or individually. Now, by when we looked at the compatible animations, the individual one was not supported on Windows, right? Now, if you want to have this animation on a Windows platform or a Windows application, you want to make sure that you don't choose individually and it works simultaneously. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and control Z all of that so that we reset everything and make sure that it was back to normal. Um, and there we go. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off uh, by clicking on the end stopwatch over here. I'm going to set that to be zero. Okay, then I'll come to one second forward. Okay, and I'm going to set that back to 100. Okay, and now if we play this, you can see we have this animation, which is super boring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all of this. And I'm going to right click, go to keyframe assistant and choose easy ease, or you can use F9 as a shortcut shortcut on your keyboard. And I'm going to click on that. And now if you play this, it's a little better, it's a little smoother, but we wanted to have a little bit of a realistic animation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select these two keyframes. I'm going to come here to the graph editor, and now you have this curve. Now, if you don't see this curve, right click and make sure to be on the speed graph, right? The speed graph shows you the speed and velocity at which a particular animation is moving based on the time. Now, now it doesn't matter if you don't understand this. All you have to do is select the last keyframe by dragging, hold down shift on your keyboard and then drag this handle so you get a curve like this, right? So now what's going to happen is the animation is going to start super fast and then it's going to slowly gradually come down, right? The initial part of the animation is going to be really fast. So if I play this, right, you can see that it's, it, it's as if like a through something, right? So let me play that again. There we go. And that looks phenomenal and perfect. Okay. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to show the offset. So now what the offset does, if I come here to the middle and I turn on this offset, you can see that the animation beginning point is at a different place. I can offset where the animation starts from. Okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come back all the way to the beginning. I'm going to create a keyframe. I'm going to say minus 250. Okay. I'm going to come all the way to the beginning. I'm going to set that back to zero. Okay. And I'm going to quickly play this and see what's happening. Right now you can see that the animation happens. Maybe I'm just going to turn this off so we can see this better. Now you can see that the animation is happening. All right. And the offset is in the same direction as the animation. That is very important. You can see that things are moving from, you know, the right to the left side. And the offset is also moving from the right to the left side. This is basically the starting point. And you can see the starting point is moving from the right side to the left side. All right. And I set that all the way to zero. Now, if I play this, let's see how this looks. All right. It looks fine, but let's go ahead and jazz this up even more. I'm going to select both of this. I'm going to press F9 on my keyboard to go ahead and easy ease the keyframes. Then I'm going to select this and do the same thing that we did over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and play this. You can see it's a little bit of a techie animation. It's got a little bit of that, you know, super fast effect, right? Um, and uh, that's looking uh, pretty good. Now, another thing that I want to do is I want to sort of fade in these animations. So I'm going to go ahead and press T on my keyboard to get the opacity. I'm going to click on the stopwatch. I'm going to set that to be zero and I'll come down to 30 frames and I'm going to then set that back to 100. Also going to go ahead and set that to easy ease. Now here, I'm not going to go ahead and give in that curve because I don't want to, right? Because if I do give it, right? So let's see what happens if I don't give it. All right. You can still see the little bit of the fade effect in the beginning, right? But if I go ahead and select this and I go ahead and tweak it all the way to the beginning, you can barely see that fade animation, right? You can, it doesn't even look like I applied it, right? So I want to see that fade animation. So I'm going to turn this off. Uh, basically, I'm going to press control Z or command Z on my keyboard to undo it. And then I'm going to play this. And this is what we are going to get. Now that looks fantastic. Now, what we want to do is apply the same changes, all of these changes to all the other layers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, press U on my keyboard or actually let me not press U. I'm going to go ahead and select the trim parts. I'm going to copy that. Make sure in the first frame, I'm going to copy the trim parts and then I'll come down to stroke two and I'm going to come here down to context and press paste. And that's going to paste that over here. I'm going to do the same thing over here, paste, and that's going to paste over here. I'm going to come down to outer stroke here as well and then paste 
and then uh, that pace here as well. So now if you go ahead and play this, you can see that all of them animate in at the same time and it looks super cool. It looks like a, some super fancy loading animation, right? It looks really interesting, right? Let's play that again. Yeah, it looks stunning. I mean, this is already pretty great, right? Uh, but we're gonna take things a little bit further. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of this and I'm gonna press S on my keyboard to get the scale animation. I'm gonna click Combat all the way to the beginning. I'm gonna create a keyframe for all of them. And since I've selected all of them, I can just click on one stopwatch and it applies to everything. And actually I'm gonna go ahead and set all of them to 220, right? I'm gonna set all of them to 220. Um, you can choose to give different values, but I'm gonna go ahead and set all of these to 220. Now the last one I actually wanted to come from the back, right? Now, when I choose 220, you can see that all of them, they are sort of up front, but I don't want this. I want the last one to be back. So I'm gonna give it a negative value or not a negative value. I'm gonna give it a value less than 100. And I'm gonna probably choose 70 over here, okay? And then we'll come down to uh, one, one minute and 30 frames. I'm gonna go ahead and set this back to 100, uh, 100, uh, 100, and 100. Okay, and I'm gonna select all of this. I'm gonna press F9 on my keyboard and let's see how this looks. Okay, it looks fine, but it's not great. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select all of this. I'm gonna come over here to the graph editor, select all of this, hold down shift, and move these all the way to the beginning so that we get that nice easing effect again. So now let me play this and see how this looks. Right, it's gonna take a minute to sort of render that. Let me play that again. Right, it looks a lot better, looks super fancy. Okay, and the interesting thing, as you can see over here, is that the stroke animation finishes off over here, but then we want the animation to still exist. We want to have that exit. We want to have that inertia, similarly how you see in objects, right? So you can see that there's a little bit of animation that still happens, even though the animation ended over here, right? It's sort of like a nice fade or a gradual ease of the animation. You kind of slowly put the animation down to an ease, all right? So that's what we want. Now, I'm gonna do things a little bit more interesting. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select the, um, all of, first of all, close all of this. I'm gonna come down to 15 frames. So you can hold down shift and control or shift and command on your keyboard, and you can press the right arrow key that moves it by 10 frames. And then I'm gonna hold down command or control depending on which device you're using. I'm gonna press the arrow key five times, one, two, three, four, five. And now I'm gonna select the second uh, stroke uh, two layer and then I'm gonna press the left square bracket key and that's going to push this all the way to over here. So if I press U on my keyboard, you can see all the keyframes, but then the layer I've pushed it to over here. I'm gonna go ahead another 15 frames, all right? And I'm gonna click here and then press the left square bracket key again. And there we have, I'm gonna go ahead and go 15 frames forward again. So I'm gonna press, um, you know, shift and command and then go one, two, three, four, five, and then move the outer stroke layer this time over here, okay. Now let's see how this looks, all right? Now you can see we have this super amazing, really fast, you know, crazy type animation, right? And it looks amazing. Now the thing what I've done here is I've animated the outer layer as well. Now that's a choice uh, that you can make. Now in this case, I actually don't want to have that stroke animation on the last layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and just press U on my keyboard and uh, probably come over here and then just, uh, maybe just even delete the trim parts layer, right? I don't want the trim parts layer, so I'm just gonna delete that. And I just want the scale. And obviously I want the opacity as well. Um, oh. I see that we didn't add the opacity to the other layers. So I'm gonna copy the opacity values. I'm gonna come over here, select stroke two. Uh, I'm gonna come here where it starts. I'm gonna press V to paste. And then I'm gonna come here to the beginning and press V to paste. You can see that it added the opacity values. I'm gonna come over here and to the outer stroke. And I'm gonna paste that here as well, okay? So now let's see how this looks. I'm just gonna close all of this. All right, that is looking pretty cool. That's looking pretty cool. Now, another thing that I just wanna do is I'm gonna move the opacity end point all the way to the end over here because I want the last one to gradually fade in. So let's see how that looks. All right, and uh, that's actually looking pretty cool. That's looking pretty techy and inspiring. And using this on your splash screen would look phenomenal. So that would be really, really, really interesting, right? So that's how you go ahead and create these super nice stroke animation with the trim parts. And obviously let's go ahead and check if this animation even works. So I'm gonna go down here to window and I'm gonna choose extension and Lottie files. If you don't know how to install the plugin, make sure to check out this video where I show you how to 
install the plugin and test your animations. I'm going to choose a lot of files over here and I'm going to click on credit tutorial and it's going to render it out and you can see the animation looks phenomenal. It looks perfect the way we want it um, and it is great. Now the only thing to obviously keep in mind is if you want to loop this animation we can go ahead and fade out the animation but I'm not going to fade it out. Uh, rather just make sure that you end the animation on the last frame because you don't want unnecessary frames. So I'm going to press N on my keyboard so that that just cuts off the part over here. I'm going to right click and choose trim comp to work area and now this sort of becomes sort of like a looping animation. It doesn't really loop because I need to fade it out but then this is what we're going to give to developers so we just want the actual duration of the animation. Okay, so that's pretty much it for this video guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you guys really enjoyed it. If you did, let me know in the comment sections down below. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for more amazing awesome content and I'll see you guys in my next video. So until then, take care and bye-bye.